Today, we're taking a look at Ash Ultra, an update to the Ash Clipper line from Acoustica Audio. But it has a new skin, as you can see. It looks a little bit like how Pumpkin looked, but this is really more about some of the technology that's under the hood, and we'll get to that in a second. The interface itself, it's really the same interface that the regular Ash has, but just with the new skin. You have the meters over here, so you have RMS and peak, you get both of those. Uh, on the left, you have RMS and peak, so you have the input, of course, and then the output. If you change this to LUFS, then the readouts will show you the numbers in LUFS rather than the numbers in RMS and peak. Once again, input, output knob, right? No different, a minus one for that true peak function. This is how you dial in how much of the clipping goes on, right? You have the times four, right? That's what I like to call the naughty button. The auto function is still there. The gain reduction readout shows you how much is being reduced, of course. This section will give you some visual feedback of how the signal is flowing. The bottom section shows you the waveform and what the plugin is actually doing to the waveform. Good old bypass button. On the left, you have mid, side, left and right, whether you want soft or hard clipping. And then this post clip is activated when you are using the uh, built-in limiter options that come with Ash as a whole. Again, all of these are the same things that are in the regular Ash lineup. Everything else is the same. There's now some dithering options here, right? And then this is your final files resolution. So it kind of works in hand with the dithering. Now, the thing that separates Ash Ultra from the normal Ash is the new oversampling. The anti-aliasing is what is being pushed with this product. It's the new algorithm that Acoustica came up with that allows the aliasing to be pushed down very far. All right, so we'll put this on 1X right now, and I'm gonna play a track. All right, so this is Ash Ultra on the master bus. So let's increase this. And before I do that, I'm gonna put the auto on. So that's too much. Now, I'm not really trying to get it to saturate. I want it to be clean. And I think the growl I'm hearing is coming from somewhere else. All right. Now, it's clipping. And that's what it's clipping, right? That's the difference between what the plugin is doing and the original signal. All right, so let's bypass this. Much cleaner. Changed a few things. Should make it easier to keep the distortion out from what I've done in the background. All right. Give it a little bit more. Now, if I hit this soft to hard, you see how it changes here at the uh, at the zero point. It shows you it softens up. So it's just a little visual feedback, right? I think that's pretty good. So we're getting roughly three, three and a half decibels of clipping that equates to three, 
three, three and a half decibels of more headroom on our master, right? Go hard. Definitely hear more of the distortion there. But as you can see down here at the bottom, and I kind of glossed over this on pumpkin, but down at the bottom it's showing you exactly what the plugin is doing, right? Most of the drum peaks is what is it's grabbing. So let's let's get extreme with it. As you can see, it's digging more into the signal. So if I take the snare, actually if I take all of the drums out. You can see that it is clipping off into the music portion. So maybe we don't want that. At least not where the drums are not playing. Right? Now there are some peaks there that I think would are worthy of <laughs> being clipped. Alright. So right there. Can we bring our drums back? Yeah, so that's about right where we're at. And I think that's that's the optimal area that well, we're not completely destroying the music portion of the signal but we are definitely getting the transients which is what you usually do with clipping you kind of want to, to tame the transients to a point that you do gain that extra headroom going to get a little techy. I usually don't do these kind of things because I don't really care. <laughs> what I have is a sweep. It's a signal sweep and I'll actually bypass here. Um, Ash. If I play it, this is what we're testing with. Alright. And the general area right before the little pop, which is the test signal starting over. That is where we're looking for aliasing, right? In this general area. So let us restart and unbypass Ash and let us see what happens here. And we're at 1x, right? I'm not clipping right now, so let me clip some. Go up to about four. Now, this is aliasing. This is what you don't want to have in your record. Right? And if any of your plugins are aliasing, this becomes a part of your signal and it can kill your clarity. All right, so that's 1x. Let's go to 2x. So now we're getting into the oversampling thing. So now look at this one. That's the previous one. And look at that one. All right. So we're starting to because we're pushing higher into the internal frequency or the internal sample rate is starting to clean up some of that. So let's push it to 4x. All right. And this is again. So far, we're not doing any anti aliasing. So coming in, it's a little cleaner, just a little bit. Let's push it up to 32x. Now, because this is oversampling, it is pushing the aliasing way, way out there. But 32X is gonna be pretty heavy, right? Because we're doing sampling 32 times. So what we could do instead is go back to at least 8X is what I found. So at 8X, we got a little aliasing in there, right? That, that becomes a part of your signal if you're clipping and again i'm doing this extreme we're going way past what we would normally um, do as far as clipping is concerned but that's 8x oversampling so now this is where the tech comes in let's capture that one more time 
Now this is the new tech. As you can see, we're getting 32x performance from eight times oversampling with the new acoustical audio anti-aliasing technology. Now, I, I won't even bother to go up anymore from there because that that's enough, right? Um, I, I still have a fairly low CPU hit from using 8x and I've even tested that with, uh, what is it, pumpkin? Beautiful, at 8x is still fairly low in CPU usage. I'm able to use that on various tracks and keep that anti-aliasing uh, or keep the aliasing in check. So that's really what's new. That's the ultra part of Ash. Everything else is pretty much the same, right? I mean, you got the dithering and all of that kind of stuff, but that is definitely where um, the the new tech. And I'm excited because I'm, I'm watching these guys improve their tech. Everything from lower CPU usage, like all of the new products have been pretty light on the CPU, but still maintaining that style of dynamic convolution that allows you to put analog processings in print on our DAWs. Outside of that, 